All right, everybody. Kenny Smith with Total Force Holding. All right, we talked about OC spray last week, so this week we're going to talk about some more impact or less lethal weapons. Let's just kind of set an impact weapon. So, impact weapons are a pretty solid gap between less than lethal force and lethal force, namely because they can be either one, depending on the type of weapon, where you apply it, and how you apply it. All right. Uh, so the first impact weapon we're going to talk about is probably the oldest. The classic walking stick. <laughs> All right, now this is just a hiking staff. Me and my wife both have one of these. Uh, it's not heavy, right? It is meant for basically like some extra traction when you're walking. But I don't have to tell you that for anybody trained in the use of swords, right? This could be quite effective when applied to the legs, to the head. It gives me a substantial reach, especially if you use it one-handed, more like a European fencing tool, All right? Can you use it as you would a rifle and bayonet? Yeah, absolutely, you sure can. Matter of fact, uh, it's slightly longer than an M16 with a bayonet fix. So if you're used to popping sticks, you can make that happen with a long walking stick. All right, now it does have some disadvantages in the sense that because it's long, it's easy to disarm, but uh, it also gives you reach. If you use both hands on it, you can do a lot with it. Um, long batons are commonly used to deal with riots just because you can do a lot with them, all right? There's just a lot of things you can do with it. But there's a lot of places where carrying a straight stick will cause you a problem. Enter the evolution of the walking stick, the cane. Now, this is from uh, Mark Shuey at Cane Masters. It's got a bird's beak on the front. It's, it, it's decorative in nature. It has nothing to do with that being a little bit more effective, all right? Obviously, you can Use it like a crook on a shepherd's staff, all right? It's got some gripping surfaces. Again, you can use it like a rifle and bayonet, all right? It's about the same length as an M16, right? Minus the bayonet, of course. So that works. Your Japanese sword techniques work with it well, as does your European fencing, all right? This is a good one. And because this is considered a medical device covered under the Americans with Disabilities Act, you can carry one of these just about anywhere you want to. Uh, I've carried this one on planes and courthouses, right? And because it's a medical device, there ain't so much they can say to you about it. All right, so I highly recommend carrying a cane, all right? Uh, to be ADA compliant, it's got to be of solid construction or hollow core metal. I don't know if it could be solid. I don't know anybody that's used one this solid, but it does have to have a crook on it. This would not fly for ADA compliance. It's got to have the crook. It can't be weighted, all right, and it can't have anything special hidden inside it like a sword cane or anything like that. So something else that a lot of people think of when they hear about impact weapons is the old classic mag light. Now this one needs some work, all right? Now I know several old school police officers who still swear by the old 40 mag light worn on the offside. So obviously they can integrate it with their handgun and they've, uh, Got the impact effect of it. You put 4D batteries in this thing and it's a concussion waiting to happen. Uh, you, you pop that in the upper thigh, upper arm, uh, any of your green zones, it, it, they're going to know. Uh, you catch someone in the forearm, in the shin, something like that, they're really going to know. Uh, you go to the red zones, which would be for lethal force only. You lay this between the uprights like a field goal to the side of the neck to the head. They're, they're probably going to leave you alone really quick after that. Which that evolved, my dad got me this one a few years ago. This stays hanging up on my front door, all right? Obviously, it's shaped like a miniature baseball bat, which means you're going to have a whole lot harder time convincing someone that this is not a weapon than this. I advocate people keep one of these in their vehicles, right? Because you never know when you need a light to change a tire, right? See where that leak's coming from, whatever. Uh, inspect damage after a collision, uh, let some let other motorists know that are approaching you. That is just a flashlight that can be a weapon. This one's pretty obvious, a, a weapon that is also has a flashlight in it. It's shaped like a miniature baseball bat. This thing is extremely effective as a bludgeon, as a baton, but uh, be hard pressed to convince someone you didn't intend to carry it for use as a weapon. The flashlight on it is fairly bright. It's got high, low, and strobe there. So that's something that you could add to your collection if you so desired, but understand there's nothing covert about it all right so then we get to like a duty size flashlight is this still an impact weapon you bet your ass you're going to use it like a yawara like a pocket stick or a kubaton right you're going to use it as a fist load and strike with hammer fist 
or what would be a ridge hand. And uh, that's gonna be quite effective. In addition, you got a really bright uh, main light, a strobe, and a uh, fairly useful 85 lumen low setting. This thing uh, pumps out a thousand lumens on high. All right, I'm not gonna strobe the camera because I don't know if any of y'all are epileptic. An 85 on low, and that's low, right? And I remember when 90 lumens out of a Surefire G3 or uh, a 9P was considered like blindingly hot. And speaking of the old Surefires, these right here, this is the Surefire Defender series, right? It's got the crenellated bezel on either side. All right, uh, I had to take my LED conversion out. It just went bad. Notice it's a lot smaller. All right, and I've had this light for huh, almost 20 years now, I think. Like, somewhere between 17 and 18, okay? You hit somebody with that, and, I mean, you got one hell of an impact weapon, plus this live will open up, up on either side. All right, again, which one looks like more of a weapon, though, if you need to be covert? This one? Or this one with, the, with its sharp edges. Now, this is the old school one. It's only pushing 60 lumens, right? Only pushes 60 lumens. All right, but I've got no issue carrying this still today, today, although I want more light output. Now we've got things like this, okay? Compare this Streamlight Stylus Pro USB to the old standard, the Surefire E2D. Uh, that's 60 lumens. This is 90. I don't know how well you can see it on that white board. Can I still use it the same way I would use that bigger one? Of course I can, it's about the same length. It's just a lot narrower. I'm still gonna use it like a or like a hammer fist, but I've got this extended rubber switch, so I'm not gonna get as good effect coming into the rear, okay? But coming in this way, this works very, very well. All right, one thing these small pin lights can do is if you catch it like this, law enforcement security guys and get someone who's sitting down, don't wanna get up doing the peaceful protest thing, but they're now causing an issue. Right, like uh, case in point, when I was bouncing, it wouldn't be uncommon. Come closing time, people sit on the bar stool. They don't want to get up. They don't want to leave. Well, you got to leave because we got to get you out of here. Take your small flashlight like this. Put your thumb on it. Lay it underneath the jaw. Doesn't look like you're doing anything. Roll it in towards them and lift them up under here if you want to have real fun. Take your hand like this. Push in behind the ear right there and catch the knuckle of your thumb underneath the jawbone on the same side and cut your thumb in they'll pop right up for you. At least they always did for me. So they, that has some uses, usefulness as well. But also we have my current carry light right here. This is my everyday broke pocket clip on it. Now compare this to my old E2D, right? Significantly smaller. Now check this out. There's the E2D 60 lumen beam compared to the 500 lumen beam of my macro stream here, right? significantly brighter and it's got a pretty useful five lumen low. Now I've got big hands and you notice it still protrudes when I hold it like a Uara, but I no longer have a double ended Uara. I have one or the other. And for me, I want it down. But this is an absolutely brutal impact weapon, especially in close quarters. So don't underestimate your common flashlight. I mean, shit, I carried these two right here because they're legal and I can, and they're one of the most sensitive as far as tight security goes, non-permissive environments in the state which is the state fair and no one batted an eye. Why? Because if you're there after dark, it's perfectly reasonable to have a flashlight and uh, they can't say shit about a cane. So plus uh, I actually do have bad knees and a jacked up spine and all kinds of other shit where I might legit need that can cane after walking around out there all day. So now with the impact weapons, we're going to get more to the purpose built stuff. Okay. This is a Monadnock straight baton. It dates to the early eighties. Uh, this one was in a past life owned by our sheriff's office here where I'm at. I actually know the deputy who was issued it, and yes, he is the one responsible for bending it. Um, this was this thing's older than I am. All right, polycarbonate. This thing hurts like all hell to get hit with, right? But that's what it was designed for. This right here is a bludgeon. There's no other use for it, okay? So it's not covert, but I can't sit here and tell you that a straight baton isn't an effective impact weapon because it is. Would I leave this in my vehicle? Would I try and find a, a method of carrying this out and about? No, I would not. Would I ram this down beside my bed? That way I had it so I could get someone off me close by? Well, I have with this one. Uh, it's not what I would use for that now, but nonetheless, if this is what you've got, this can be quite useful. All right, although again, with this, I would much rather have this as a bedside tool because not only do I have an impact weapon, I've also got a light. That one needs an LED conversion and uh, batteries, so.
But other than that, it's good to go. So now we move on to other impact weapons. Remember, we got two here. All right, uh, also baton. This is my tried, true, and reliable ASP F26. It's the electroless nickel. I used to work in a lot of nightclubs that are dark environments. This electroless nickel catches the light. It's easier for people to see it open, thus I'm less likely to have to use it. All right, again, can I use this as a bludgeon? Absolutely. Um, this works very well for those trained in the Filipino martial arts with the stick work, which I am. Uh, unfortunately, the ASP and Monadnock curriculums that most police and security officers are trained in are meant more to reduce liability by re reducing the likelihood of injury to the person you're hitting. Uh, let's be real, if I'm hitting them with a stick, I really don't give a fuck what happens to them. But those curriculums do because they don't want to get sued and they want to be able to sell them to liability conscious agencies, which I get. But at the same time, um, this right here, it's not going to have as much pop as that Maglite or that even that purpose-built baton on uh, your brain zones, which are your long bones, shoulder to just above the elbow, uh, thigh to just just below the hip to just above the knee, okay? Uh, it's not going to have as much effect on those. They do have great effect on the shins and the forearms. It's a great blocking tool. And uh, the best thing about it is this is a pretty big baton. And if you're not carrying a uh, firearm in the appendix position, you could take this uh, F26 and throw it in your illegal crease, as Kelly McCann refers to it as felony carry, and you can get it into the play into play pretty quick. All right, a lot of people just drop it in your back pocket. It's a bad idea because it's easy to lose care, custody, and control of it. All right, uh, how easy is it to pick someone's pocket of their wallet? Same thing applies with this. So uh, you got it. It collapses down fairly small, even though it's quite a good size stick. Uh, it trans transmits energy pretty well, or at least it has when I've hit people with one of these. Um, they do work well as an impact weapon, but also understand if you go about concealing this, that can be a problem and is a problem in many states. So keep in mind with Gality if you're considering carrying an ASP. If you can legally carry an ASP, this one makes a lot more sense. Which one would you rather try to conceal? The F26 or as ASP refers to it, the P16? All right, well, what's the difference? Well, weight for one, this is a lot lighter, and two, it's 10 inches shorter, okay? Uh, but what do you get in return for that? Well, for starters, for me, this one feels like it's got more weight further forward, all right, which I like in an impact weapon. It feels like it's gonna, and I've actually hit somebody with this one, uh, it works pretty well, all right? Even though it's short, they do have the belter pocket clip on there. All right, again, same thing, if you wanna carry it in that felony carry position, all right, that's perfectly okay. And that just goes the fuck away. Again, you can hook your waistband, it pops right out, and you're right straight to deployment. All right, you still have your hammer fist with the end, and obviously forehand, backhand, whatever angles you wanna work with this. But understand, with it being shorter, two-handed strikes are out of the question. Whereas with the uh, longer 26, you can absolutely get into some fair bearing two-hand stick striking with it all day long, all right? And you can still jab with it even though it's short, you're just gonna shove in this way like you would with the F26 because if you shove in this way, it might collapse on itself. So, collapsible batons are very useful impact weapons, although for concealed carry, this is what I'm going with. I'm wearing a duty belt, this is what I'm going with. Mission drives the gear. Continuing. All right, this impact weapon right here pulls double duty. Well, triple. One, keeps my keys where I can find them, which also gives me an additional impact weapon. Two, it's my ASP key defender, right? That bail and that brass rod control delivery of OC pepper spray. Plus, not only I have a key flail, which this is not gonna be tremendously effective, but it is a good distraction, which can buy me time to get that safety bail off and this brought up in a position to deliver OC spray. Plus, I have a Kubaton. All of the techniques we were talking about with your flashlight work with Kubaton. All of your Kubaton joint lock techniques work with a small flashlight. So a Kubaton is another good impact weapon that a lot of people don't think about, uh, but it's out there and people carry them and I highly recommend that one for masks. Next thing, all right, police security officers or anybody else, you carry a big can of pepper spray on your duty belt, in your bag, something like that. You spray somebody, it's not working, they're getting too close. You still have an impact weapon. You're gonna concentrate the impact on the point of that can. Right, and ideally you wanna catch them like right here so it opens them up, okay? Just hammer fist strike, just like that. And once you get them drove back, you get some distance, spray them again, right? But your OC can, if it's big enough, can still be a valid impact weapon. All right, another in extra uh, impact weapon, which I would never suggest trying to deploy primarily as an impact weapon, but this might be 
you're in the process of trying to deploy your folding knife, all right? You got it down here in your pocket, okay? And as you're drawing it, you're coming to position to deploy it, right? And you're about here, and that person, you realize they're a lot closer than you thought. You can absolutely rely on the butt end of it and use it like a yawara or a pocket stick all day long. And then again, once you get them, you're cycling your strikes, right? You get them to the point where they're clear, then you can deploy the blade. But until you get to that point, you can use it as an impact weapon to buy you enough time to get it open. Don't try that with certain knives. That one it'll work with the uh, 615 Mini Ruckus from Benchmade. Uh, you'd have to look at your blade. Now, the closer to a point you have at the bottom, the more impact you can focus, the better it'll work. So just keep in mind, uh, just stuff about your blade. Next, the poor man's knuckle duster. The padlock, okay? You can absolutely, and I'm kind of partial to doing this this way. All right, you can use it like a lower finger knuckle duster where you're just striking with a hammer fist and relying on that to focus your impact, all right? Also with that, you can come in with more of a reversed hammer fist, use it that way. This is just a poor man's brass knuckles. Although you can also, if you have a cloth or anything like that handy, you can 100% use a prison special with it. All right, all that is, you stick your cloth, your dirty gem sock in your gem bag, whatever, your locker for your gem bag, boom. You've got a um, uh, ra rather nasty at that impact weapon right there, ready to go. Uh, other stuff you can use that a lot of people have thought about. This is a Hot Tamale V2 coin purse from Mean Jean Leather. I had the original V1, but it looked a lot like a sap, so I didn't want it to be taken as that. This is just filled with change, and I've got a belt loop right here. Goes on my belt, we'll pull the dot snap, I'll catch that, pop those open, this comes out. And this, this is about $18 worth of change in here. Last time I kind of think it's like $18.60 something. It's at least $18 worth of mixed change. That will uh, deliver to the right spot, will seriously make someone leave you alone really quick. Now. Downside, this being a flexible impact weapon, you have to ratchet all the way through, all right? Because if you just stop halfway, it's gonna come back and hit you. So you've gotta go all the way through and let it run out. The upside is now you can follow coming right back, okay? So anything you can do with a sap, with the exception of the edge on blows with like a, a flat sap, you can absolutely do with this. And the cool thing is this is just change first. This isn't a weapon right up until you use it as one. So. This is a good good thing to have. Plus, it keeps some emergency cash on you, too. And I actually know people that'll put a bunch of change and quite a bit of bills in there. Uh, another thing that a lot of people don't think about is their coffee cup. How many of y'all have a coffee cup like this you take with you when you're going to work or whatever? This is one hell of an impact weapon. These stainless steel coffee cups, right? They're double wall. They're thick. They, these will wrap a pretty good knot on your head. Or if push really comes to shove, you take that lid off and you focus all that impact on one of these corners, that's gonna that's gonna leave a mark. So, very effective tool, and the cool thing is, most places won't fault you for carrying your coffee cup with you. So, hell, even the most anti-gun employer probably won't grumble about shaking your coffee cup. And another one people won't grumble about anywhere, the simple ink pen. All right, now I've got different pens, but you can do them with these cheap plastic ones too, that I will use for this. Now you've got a very effective Yawara pocket stick, right? You can leave it overhanging on either end so you get some effect both forehand and backhand. I'm also partial to fountain pens for this because if you take the cap off, it's actually a point-based weapon as well, in addition to anything you could do with a coupon or your aura. So don't underestimate the pen. It's not always mightier than the sword, but sometimes it is, if for no other reason than you can probably take this into places where you can't take your sword. So uh, pens, like I, I can't think of anywhere that I've ever been where I didn't have a pen or at least have access to a pen. All right, and you can absolutely use that for any technique that you can do with a, a Kubaton or a Yawara. Now, the better built the pen, the more likely it is going to be, be for Kubaton techniques that's going to be valid. All right, um, obviously those plastic pens aren't going to take but so much. You get a good metal body, like dress type ink pen, and uh, you can do a lot with them from an impact weapons perspective. Another thing to think about is how many people carry a water jug? This is mine. This is my gallon water jug. It goes with me all the time. Right, and let me tell you something. You take this thing right here, and you give someone a wrap around the beaver with this right here. Yeah, 
that's that's going to change our attitude but even if you have one of the smaller half three quarter little anything like that any of the aluminum or stainless steel water bottles out there that is absolutely 100 percent a valid impact weapon uh in the event you need it another thing and a lot of people give me shit because i vape well, let me tell you something this geek vape you just right here is like getting hit with a brick okay uh that is not something you want bouncing off your head and even though it would break my tank and make me sad i can absolutely come in with a hammer fist with this side right here so uh other impact weapons well look around you i had a door jam right there okay now i'm not saying i'm gonna take this door jam off to hit somebody with it but what i might do is catch them in a joint lock or control technique at some point and to break their resistance introduce their head into it all right i'm currently standing on a concrete floor judo is using the world as the world's largest impact weapon so some of your throwing takedowns can can have an impact weapon like result when they hit the ground this is one of the reasons why serious self-defense advocates and true combatant specialists remember martial arts pick your poison is what you do with someone to quote kelly mccann combatants is what you do to someone all right, we don't like, combatants guys don't like to be on the ground. We can, but we don't like to because we understand we're laying on top of the world's largest impact weapon on that. I'd rather be standing on top of it and make the other guy lay on it. All right, so you always have options when it comes to being armed and impact weapons are one to think about. Uh, as I look around right here, let's say you go to the gym, all right, and you're a lady who's being stalked by an aggressive ex-boyfriend. When you walk by the weight rack when he's stalking you, you wrap him in the head with a five, I'm pretty sure he'll leave you alone. All right. Uh, and if you're like a uh, muscle mommy and you swing a 25 and bounce it off the side of his head, I'm pretty sure your stalker ex-boyfriend will leave you alone. Dumbbell, same thing. All right. Impact weapons are truly everywhere. You just have to know how to look. And this also ties back another, another thing. I'm pretty sure it's directly attributed to the late Paul Gomez. Everything is a weapon if you hold it right. And when it comes to impact weapons, that's especially true, okay? You hold anything that's solid and you swing it hard enough and whoever you hit with it is probably, not guaranteed, but probably going to reconsider their negative attitude in a very, very short period of time. So it's Kenny Smith with Total Force Holdings. I want all y'all to take a look at my Patreon if you would. Um, there'll be a link for it down in the description box below. And just below that, there'll be a, a link tree, which has all my other social media. If you want to support the channel, support what I'm doing, uh, I'd greatly appreciate it. Best way to do that, subscribing to my Patreon channel, of course. Uh, but if you don't want to do that, can't do that, hey, I understand times are tight for everybody. I get it. Um, that's cool. I'd appreciate it if uh, you like my content, if you follow me on the rest of my social media down in the link tree. And remember, Patreon saw this a month before those of y'all watching it on YouTube. So if, uh, if you like what I'm doing and it's uh, worth a few bucks a month to you, check that out. Um, there again, I understand if you can't, just follow me on the other social media and you'll catch more of my stuff. So uh, this is Kenny Smith with Total Force Holdings. Y'all stay frosty. Y'all stay safe. Y'all stay dangerous. Take care.